Hello, everybody. It's great for you to be here. Thank you for joining me and drawing with me. I really appreciate all those who uh, come and draw with me. Remember, this uh, channel is not about showcasing talents and abilities. It's about helping you to get some techniques and some styles of drawing that you can make your own. And, and eventually your own voice will come through and you'll, you'll find your own niche in this art world. Um, I'm so grateful for you to be here, though. Today we're going to be drawing with ink. Uh, I'm going to be using a Pigma Micron pen and number two pencil and a kneaded eraser on just some good drawing paper. So come along with me and, and let's do a little practicing and figure out this thing called ink. Pen and ink can be a lot of fun, especially when uh, there's a lot that you leave out. Just like we did with the last drawing we did. We left so much out, and it, it turned out okay. And most of the the ones that I saw, I was very happy with. I thought you guys did great. Today, uh, let's do a little drawing with uh, with buildings. So the first thing again is simple shapes, and the simple shapes with buildings are usually squares, rectangles, triangles, that kind of a thing. And so that's what we want to do. First of all, establish where you want it to go. I want the top of my castle to be up in here. And I think I would rather leave more water than sky in this one. So uh, so I'm just going to kind of block that in and say, well, okay, if I, if I put my castle about right in there, kind of block that in. There's that rectangle. This kind of represents the roof line there. Little triangle over here for that part of the roof. A little island part, maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave that out and have that touch that side of the, the page there. And again, remember that you just draw it in as fast as you can because you're just trying to get the gist of it, trying to get the proportions and everything. And there's a lot of this that is really hard to see. If you're going to put in where the trees go, very simply use the uh, simple shapes for the trees. Don't worry about branches and things. So I just say, well, over here, there's a little tree right there. Little tree. So you can do lollipop trees even. Crazy, huh? There's another little tree right there. Just about every Scottish Highland movie I've ever seen has this castle in it. Very, very famous castle. Or should I say ruin, because it's kind of a ruin. And the cool thing about buildings is... Uh, it's not that big of a deal if you're slightly off. Try to get it as close as you can, but it might be a little slight off. The windows and things like that. And a lot of this is, we're just going to draw it as we go. Ever study the architecture of castles? Do you? Yeah. I like to uh, when I when I lived in Europe, I like to go from castle to castle, and I call it castle hopping. And I especially like the ruins because there's nobody around. You can climb all over the walls, and it's a lot of fun. If you wanted to, you could do some of these mountains in the background, but just remember when you do backgrounds, if you do backgrounds, 
that um, you, you simplify it as much as you possibly can. And you keep it very, very light. You don't want to distract it from the background to the foreground. You don't want to distract from there. And usually we would probably do the background first, but right now I want to establish where everything goes here. And if you, if you kind of look in that, you see all these little spots in there. Those are just the rocks. And when you draw with ink, you want to just simplify it. Nobody cares if those rocks are in the right place. So we're just going to simplify it. And I don't know where you start, if you want to go left to right or up and down. Um, I'm just going to start with this little chimney that's right there in the back. And this, it's really hard to see. So I'm going to zoom into it as much as I can. This isn't the greatest picture. But you can see that little chimney. Our light source, of, of course, is coming from our right. And so you can see that shadow over there. That's all in shadow. So whenever you do darker areas, you just add more line. So let me zoom into mine so I can kind of show you what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to start with this, this uh, little chimney that's up there. And uh, I'm just going to start with this um, little shadowy area that's right there. And just like normal, you don't do a line, a, a straight line or little dots and dashes. You can do this entire thing with dots if you wanted to. But there are brick that's laid in there. And uh, so I'm just going to add a little dot or a little dash in there. And just very simply, little dots and dashes. This little edge that's over here, if you wanted to, you could do a little dashed line. Because there's rock and things, and some of it blends into the background, some of it's a little darker. You just leave that. You just keep it like that. Here's the front edge, and this is all in shadow. So you can just do little dots and dashes to show it's in shadow. And the more you do, the darker your value goes. So little dots and dashes. You can see this little triangle of the roof. I'm going to throw that in real quick. And if you want, if you want that to be in shadow, because it is quite a bit darker, I'm just going to throw in little hatched lines back and forth. I can add more later on. But that's about all you need. Again, we can come back in. We can add more later on. Here's some brick in that uh, in that part of the little chimney that goes up in there. And again, just little dots and dashes. If you see a little dark spot, just add a little dark spot. Here's some brick in there. You can go back and forth. This is called meandering, where you kind of go back and forth like this, and you can kind of skip and come up and down. But this part is darker, so I'm going to hatch through that. And that is the chimney. I mean, that, that's pretty simply done. You can, again, come back into it if you need to. Oftentimes, when I'm doing things like this, I don't really see what's going on. And so I just do the little darks and lights and let it take care of itself. So again, I'm just going to put little hatch marks in there. And I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on in here. I don't see what's... But I can see little dark edges, and I'm just going to throw those in real quick. Little hatched lines. You don't have to draw a line around everything either. Please don't. We're going to go overboard here and not, not put lines around everything. So like this edge that's over here. Don't, don't draw a line down there. 
just used little hatch lines. Kind of like that book I showed you where the pages, you, you had like 200 pages, but they only drew five lines. So there's that edge. And it's pretty well done. This one down here, because there's a darker shadow, you may want to put in a little line there because that is all in shadow. And you can just scribble in some little dark edges because you know that's pretty dark over there. It's all in shadow. Little ink drawing like this shouldn't take us very long. Uh, I would say, on average, you should spend, you know, about an hour and a half or so, depending on how complex your drawing is. Where this little edge is, again, you can put little dots and dashes down there to just tell yourself that's where the edge of that shadow goes. And because it's darker, you can just hatch through it. Hatch, 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 all the way through that. There's a couple little side view windows. I'll show you how to do windows uh, on some of these other facings. But where there, it's side view like this, you just do a little slit, little dark slit. And you can, you can do little dots or, or you can do little zigzaggy lines down there. But that's it. Piece of cake. Wherever it's dark, just add more line. And if you need to add more line, you can go back and add more line. Now, because I want it to look like brick, I'm just going to come back in. And just with little hatchy lines, just back and forth, you can say, well, there's a brick there. There's a rock over here. And I'm just looking at the castle going, okay, where does it look darker? I'm just going to throw in some little hatchy back and forth. But because it's brick and it's got to lay this way, or rock, in this case it's cut rock. So I'm just going to lay them against the way it's cut rock. And just here and there, don't need a lot. Because you're just telling your viewer that's what this is. This area over here is really dark, so I'm just going to throw in some, some more darkness, hatch line through it. And again, we want to go pretty fast with this. Just little squiggly lines. This is the part of the wall that's over here. There's a little wall. Whenever you're doing the base here where the, the ground meets the castle, there's usually grass or trees or something there. So rather than draw a line there, just draw these little edgy lines coming up in there, these little dots and dashes. And if there's a little tree in there, you can do these little, uh, like little M's. When we get to the trees, I'll show you how to do M's and U's. But that's weeds. Those are just weeds, little little bushes. And they're just little dots and dashes. And you get that little texture, and everybody knows what that is. Here's another chimney over here. I'm going to do it the same way I did the other one. But the, the roof has some tiles on it. So I'm going to just go back and forth these little lines, kind of get that roof line in there. Any place that you feel like it needs to go a little darker, just scribble in the shape of the darkness.
here's that roof. I'm just going to go back and forth with the these lines on the roof. Back and forth. Just barely letting my, my pen touch the surface. Like I say, if you feel like you need... more darkness in there you just can add that to it hopefully you're uh, you're practicing barely touching the surface because that, that pen will, will rub off on the surface. You'll get ink there without really pushing down. The more you practice that, the better. It'll save your pen. And it'll give you these nice, light, little, tiny lines. Whenever you feel like you need brick, just back and forth, meandering, barely touch it. Sometimes you can just shake. It is a practice thing. It doesn't come natural. Again, whenever you see a dark shape, just throw in that shape using hatch lines or dots or whatever. It'll come through. It'll happen for you. I have no idea what this is kind of got to be a balcony or something over here because it's really dark. It must jut out from the building. I'm not real familiar with this castle. I've only been to Scotland once and we never got to the Highlands. Got up as far as Edinburgh. Unfortunately. So this does look like it kind of sticks out and there's got to be some drains or this has got to be supports or something that's underneath there. And these just these three little dark areas and then this rounded part. I'm going to throw that in with little dots and dashes. And it's not really straight. It's kind of at an angle. And then you've got these little rocks, these little brick. And again, just meandering back and forth through that. Little dots and dashes. Wherever it looks darker, throw more in there. Whenever you're going to do windows, if you could just do little L's or 7's, depending on the light source. Our light source is coming from this direction, and so I'm going to do a little 7. So if I come down, there's a little window right here, and instead of drawing it for rectangle, I'm just going to do a little 7, like that. Is that a 7? Is that a backward 7? It's a backward 7. And then I'm just going to hatch through that. And it'll, uh, if you hatch through it very lightly, it'll look like glass around it. If you hatch through it a little darker, it'll look like it's open. So just a couple little hatches through there, and there's your window. Piece of cake. Same thing on this one. I'm just going to come back through it. Let's do a little backward seven. Hatch through it, and there's your window. Piece of cake.
I'm going to allow the little brick over here to define the edge of that little rounded tower that comes out. Without drawing a line there, I can tell my viewer that this kind of stands out by just where my, my little ends end. If I drew a line, I'd be stuck with that line. But now I can adjust it. Even if I'm in the wrong place, I can move it by just drawing more lines. This must be our staircase right there. Usually when you have stacked windows like that, that's a staircase. Or even here, that might be some stairs. Staircases always go to the left. So that the defenders can use their weapons and the attackers can't easily because it gets stuck in the stairs did you know that a lot of thought goes into that the rest of that roof line and again I'm not drawing a line here where this chimney is I'm just going to let the roof line dictate where that goes back and forth and if you wiggle a little bit that's okay because it's all kind of wiggly anyway In order to do the steps on this roof line here, and let me zoom into that because it's hard to see it. Um, during the 16th century, a lot of the roof lines had these little steps in them. And uh, instead of drawing the steps, I'm just making these little marks. That's the top of the steps. And again, just little dots and dashes. A lot of the stuff, I don't know what's that. But I can see the shapes of dark and light. That's what I'm going to throw in there. This little window on the other side is a seven. If you, if you kind of look at it, there's a little seven right there. And then you just hatch through it. Try to keep a rectangle and there it is.
Just like in most of the things I like to do, I, I try to get rid of my graphite as soon as I can. So there's a lot of graphite up in there that's, it just, it makes it muddy, it makes it dirty. So as soon as you can, try to get rid of that graphite. Here's some more little trees, bushes. I almost like do little fan shapes. So like when I'm doing bushes, um, I can start out and kind of go this way like this. And I can do them really big or really small. Uh, when I get to the trees, I'll show you how to do that with the trees. But um, you can do those little, little, just kind of little bushes. Here and there. They're just small. You have a little imagination. Your viewer is going to have a little imagination too. Here's the little crenellations over there, and I'm just doing a couple little shadows. They're kind of evenly spaced, and it kind of makes it look like there's a little crenellated tower over there, especially when you start doing the brick in there. You just kind of go in between little dots and dashes. You're like, oh, okay, I get it. You don't need a top part to it at all. You guys do know what crenellation is, right? Those little ups and downs that the castle balls have so people can shoot through those. Those little the gaps are called arrow loops, by the way. You had to have license to crenellate. If you didn't, it told the king that you were preparing for battle. He would come and attack you. A lot of little tiny details that you just leave out. Just dry in the darks. Let the darks go. Everything else will fall into place. And your viewer will kind of imagine things in there. Just enough dots and dashes, and everybody goes, ah, oh, okay, I get it, rock, brick. You guys ready for the trees? Trees are a piece of cake. So as we kind of look at these little trees over here, it's the, the texture that you want to get in there. So up to this point, we've been doing very linear things back and forth. Now we're just going to do little M's and U's. So let me zoom into mine so you can see what I'm doing. These little trees that are over there. I'm going to be doing little M's on the top like this. And again, you kind of fan around the central part. This, You know, if you could see the, the limbs, they'd be kind of coming out like this. And at the bottom, you do little U's, M's and U's. And you just do it where they're shadow. Every place else, you can leave it out. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here and just do little M's. And you can even have some of them just kind of hanging out there, not even attached to anything. Piece of cake. This is the easiest tree you've ever drawn. And you can use little dots there, too, if you wanted to add a little texture. You think, well, it needs to go a little darker right there. It's a little dot, little dashes. And then as I get around to the bottom, there are little U's. And again, you can have some that are just hanging out. They're not really attached to anything. 
in the background, it's fairly dark. So you can hatch through that entire background. Hatch, 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 hatch. Leave the part of the tree out. And there you go. Then you can go back in. You can add some more darks back in there. And they're just little scribbles. I'm just scribbling. Just have to get some areas darker than others. All my trees are going to be that way. I can say I have no idea what's going on back there. I'm just drawing shapes of dark and light. And it, it looks like buildings or whatever. This is part of a bridge over here. This is probably the gatehouse that's there. And then there's a, a bridge that's right over there. But I don't have to draw all that stuff in. And again, when you're drawing the trees, don't be afraid to leave stuff out. When in doubt, leave it out. You think to yourself, oh, I don't see that. Don't draw it in. A little chimney for the, the guard, the gatekeepers. I'm sure that's what it is. Now that we've got the important parts done, really the ground, the rocks, and everything that are down here, you just scribble in those little areas of dark and light, and you got it. And I'll show you what happens when we get down to the water. That is easier than all of it put together. So some of these little areas, that you just, you just leave them hanging out there. Everybody knows they're dark. This is the fun part. It's kind of mindless scribbling. You just look at it, think, oh, okay, it needs a little darkness over there. Scribble a little darkness over there. You got it. The shoreline is usually a little darker here and there. Because there's grass and rocks and things, but they also get um, mineral deposits from the water over the space of hundreds, if not thousands of years. So I just kind of anticipate it being just a little darker along the shore. Then where the water is, remember water is very linear. It lays you know, horizontally on the earth. So all you got to do is you kind of figure out where your dark areas are. If you come straight down from like your whatever's up in here, like the castle, you come straight down here and you say, oh, I can see where that dark edge of the castle is. I'm just going to do these little meandering lines back and forth. I'm just going to kind of concentrate where that dark shadow is from the, the castle back and forth. It's like this. Back and forth, just little meandering. And I can do that anywhere that I see darkness in there. Like there's a little bit more over here. I'm going to come back over there. A little bit more there. You do some long ones and some short ones. And back and forth. Isn't that easy? It's the easiest water you've ever drawn. Here's some more. It goes a little dark right in here. 
And then as it comes out, I can see those little dark areas there. You do a few in between if you think, well, it's not that light in between. Just do a couple there. As you get out, as, you, as you're getting more towards the bottom, just loosen up. Don't do as many. Things get a little, a um, little farther away. The closer they get, farther away they get, the tighter they go. So back in here, next to the shore. Your lines are a little tighter, a little thinner, a little closer together. And as you get out, they get a little farther away. And if you think, oh, it's a little darker, you just go in between what you've already done and just do a little bit more, and it'll darken it up. Because water is just a reflection of what you see. Just remember that water is very horizontal. So your lines need to be very horizontal. I don't think I'm going to worry about the mountains in the background. If you did want to do mountains in the background, I'll show you how to do it. But be very, very little tiny lines not much at all just a little bit in the background and that is about it really otherwise it distracts from the foreground now i'm going to go over my whole picture and get rid of any graphite i have in there that just makes it muddy cleans it up just makes it look better now what I want to do is just go back into it any place that I think, oh, I didn't get quite get dark enough. Because usually when you first lay it, your, your ink in there, you think, oh, that's dark enough. And you go back and go, eh, it's not dark enough. Also, remember to leave space for your signature somewhere towards the bottom, but not right on the edge. Up in the water somewhere would be a great place for your signature. Up in there somewhere. Got about a minute left is all. Hopefully you're going as fast as your pen will go. Trying to get as much information in there as you can. That's the beauty of this, this technique. On Thursday, we'll be drawing a human figure there's a ton of stuff you leave out when you're doing humans. It's not as hard as you think it is. Thanks for uh, drawing with me today. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you learned something. I hope you have a lovely day. And remember... Art makes life better.